Poinsettia, Chapter 11 Angus opened his eyes, squinting as the light hit them. He rubbed his arm against them and looked around. In the next instant, he shot up, his blanket falling onto his lap. He was still naked. He halted, bringing a hand to his head. I feel like I was kicked in the head by an angry mare. Gavin came alongside him and gently pushed him back down. He placed a cold compress on his forehead as he sat on the edge of the bed. Just stay calm, old friend. Gavin? What happened? I overdid it. Had you been human, you'd have been dead a week ago. A week? Has it been that long? I appreciate your concern and your help. Ah, I've been an old master. I kind of enjoyed it. You're sick, he sighed. A real pervert. There'd be a reason why I still like kilts. Quick to move in an emergency. A sexual emergency? You're still such an imbecile, Gavin chuckled. So? So what? Did you do it? Angus asked with a smirk. Did you make me yours? Gavin grabbed the compress and slapped him in the face with it. So vulgar. There are many things I would not put past me to do to you. But there is no amount of drunkenness or loneliness or desperate need to make me stoop to such a level. I'm beginning to wonder about you. Well, I'm a lassie lad myself, he said. But you're the master and lord of the house. I'm at your command. I think you're the one who's desperate, Gavin replied. How do you feel, aside from dejected? I feel all right. Another day and I should be in tip-top shape again. How did your little escapade go? Angus grinned nervously. Ah, that. It went a card into plan. No problems? Please. I had never had a problem relieving myself, no matter where it is. So tactless. How you been back to the board? There is a meeting tonight, Angus. But I'm going to need you. Angus cocked his head a little, taking a peek towards a nearby window. Seeing the drapes drawn shut, and sunlight peeking through. Master, it's daylight. Have you not gotten any sleep? I can wait, thanks to you. I had to stabilize you, and I would like to have you close by this evening, so I'm going to have to take an emergency trip out. To where? You're going to St. Raphael. Would that be the children's hospital? They will need treat me. They will if they want the money. Gavin said firmly. You need a transfusion. That will put you up to speed tonight, rather than a day or two from now. But it's a children's hospital, Angus reminded. It's also nearly bankrupt. The hospital was my home, Angus. I have a duty to care for it, and it will always work for me. St. Raphael and McIntyre Castle will always be the same to me. I am the patron. No matter how much the staff must hate me for my ignorance, they will do as they are told if they wish to maintain their Christian reputations and receive a very beneficial amount of money in return. Crafty! Is that me real master, Lord Gavin, finally come out to play after so long? Gavin stood, ignoring the comment. Can you walk yet, or should I carry you? How will you stand the sun? It looks rather early. Cool dusk, I can understand. But so early in the afternoon, you'll burn like ice in the summer. Only if I come into contact with the wreck sunlight this early, Gavin corrected. I can stand a little. But you're right. This early, the sun is more dangerous than if I waited a few hours. But I don't have that. To have you up and going in the next few hours, I need to get you there now. I'm rejuvenated, Angus, but I cannot chance leaving any side vulnerable. I'm not sure what kind of board I'll be returning to. Angus sat up, struggling to crawl to the opposing edge of the bed. With a few grunts, he pushed himself to his feet. I will need to point you, your lordship, he growled. Predatory eyes turned back to him. Just give me the command. You know I will kill for you. Your wish is me command, after all, Lord of McIntyre Castle. 
This enthusiasm excites me, almost shamefully, Gavin replied with a purr. It is because you are what you are. A vampire can be peaceful only so long. It is the darkness in your blood. There is always an inner desire to hunt. Always an inner desire to fight. You just have much more patience than humans. Your great battle could be years in the making. Get dressed, Gavin commanded. I will prepare the carriage. Tonight will certainly be quite interesting. Gavin assisted Angus to the carriage. The boy was able to be, as always, kilted and youthful in his dress. Gavin adorned his normal attire as well, a green coat and beige waistcoat, trousers to match, and his champagne-scented Wellington boots. He wore a long hat rather than his top hat, trying to shield his face from the sun and its high position in the sky. Once in the carriage, he flopped Angus onto a seat and rested himself in the opposing seat, closing the door. This carriage was an enigma in itself. Though a driver's seat was present, there was no driver, and the reins were tied. The pair of black horses foamed, eager to get on the road. But how would one steer this strange monster? Gavin pressed his fingers together before his face within, whispering incoherently to himself. The horses neighed as barking came from the distance, along with a long howl. Around the house came a pack of dogs, causing the horses to rear up and gallop off. It would seem the carriage was a runaway, but only to the naked eye. Gavin knew very well where he was going, despite being unable to see outside, for he saw through the eyes of the horses the eyes of the hounds trotting alongside the carriage to steer the steeds along. At night, this would definitely be a frightening display of what could be argued as witchery. But in the day, perhaps it would be merely confusing, perhaps entertaining to onlookers. It really only took a little time to navigate to the front of St. Raphael. He was met there by a priest that had come to perform mass for the staff and residents. The priest was dressed in long robes and wearing, aside from his crucifix, a confused expression. More so was it when Gavin stepped from the horse-drawn vehicle. Lord McIntyre? This is highly unusual, he gasped. Father Bran, I have little time for idle chatter. How does that prepare a room? Have you brought a child, your lordship? I have brought someone. Do not argue or dally. Hurry, he ordered. Father Bran stumbled over one of the dogs and rushed inside. Not bothering to wait for assistance, Gavin brought Angus from the carriage and walked with him into the mighty castle. He knew his way around. He was the lord of this castle once, after all. Like sheep stampeding from a hillside, the nurses and sisters flocked behind him, all fussing and trying to figure out the situation and determine what should be done. Gavin cared little for their meaningless banter, and found a vacant room where he assisted Angus into bed. Do not just stand there, he roared, turning to the staff. While all of you are wasting your time looking at my back, you are not tending to your jobs. Give this man a transfusion. But your lordship, from one of the nurses, do not argue with me, he snarled, grabbing her by the arm and glaring into her eyes. You will do as you are told, and that goes for your co-staff as well. My orders are absolute. I am a patron of this hospital, and my word goes. When released, the young nurse stumbled back, frightened and stunned. Yes, my lord. And with that, turned to rush off, finding the proper assistance. Do not let them toy with you, Angus. A car near your lordship, Angus chuckled. My, it's been a long time since I'd seen this side of you. It brings back old memories. Reminisce later. You focus on taking what they give you and replenishing yourself. You know where to meet me tonight. Aye, then that is that. Good luck. May shamrocks, leprechauns, and unicorns bless your path. Gavin was a little stumped by such a remark. When you have your blood returned to you, be sure to bring your brain back from Ireland. Now is not the time for a vacation. <laughs>